Thank you for joining me on week five of Classroom Pizza. I am your teacher, Justin, and I think I know what you're excited for. It's time for class. Over the past few weeks of Classroom Pizza, we've been going one ingredient at a time and talking about the effect that that ingredient has on our overall dough, flavor, and consistency. Today we've got a pretty straightforward ingredient to discuss. We're going to talk about salt. Salt pretty much has two main effects. The first major effect that salt has on our dough is that it slows down the yeast so it doesn't eat too quickly, which helps with the development of gluten. We want better gluten strands and more of them so that when we're working with our dough, we can stretch it paper thin without tearing it. Second, salt is a flavor enhancer. Have you ever had bread that didn't have salt in it? If so, you know that it was missing some salt. But salt is also a balancing act. Too much salt, and along with your cheese and sauce, and you're gonna have a very salty final product. Too little salt, and you're gonna have a very bland crust. All right, so the general rule of thumb, Stay between 2% and 4%. Right in the middle, 3% is the best in terms of flavor. It's not too salty, but it also is a good dough to work with. It's easy to stretch and there's strong gluten. To really show you the difference that salt makes, we're doing three separate doughs today in our experiment. As always, we're using the same recipe that we've been using from week two getting started, but we've scaled it down just for a single 12 inch dough ball. You can find the recipe on classroompizza.com as well. So our three doughs are gonna consist of a control dough, which will be our 3% standard dough. Then we'll have a 0% salt, so that we'll see the effect without adding any salt, and then a high percent of salt at 6%. Again, we're gonna prep these the same way using the exact same ingredients and processes, except for the levels of salt. All right, so this week I'm not cooking the doughs for us because unlike last week, we're not really gonna see a big difference, right? Last week we saw the difference in the air pockets, but once we've cooked the doughs this week, you're gonna say to yourself, well, those all look the same. The only difference would be in the saltiness, which obviously you guys can't, can't taste, so I'm sorry. So instead, we're gonna look at the doughs before they've been cooked, because remember, the other big difference is how the gluten develops. So let's take a look. The 0% salt rose the most because there was nothing to keep the yeast in check. So this dough is quite fluffy, but you'll notice that the dough itself is not very elastic. There is little to no gluten development, so stretching this dough is a pain. Now let's go to the other end of our spectrum first and look at the 6% dough. It didn't rise all that much because of the salt levels, but the gluten is still very easy to stretch. So it's a great dough for stretching, but it's gonna be super salty. Lastly, we have our standard 3% pizza dough, the same one we've been making each week. This dough is still very easy to stretch, the gluten is well developed, and the final product is not going to be too salty. So again, salt is a pretty straightforward ingredient. We want just enough salt so that it's not too salty, but not too bland, and just enough salt so that we can develop our gluten so that we can stretch it nice and paper thin. Your homework this week is pretty straightforward. Experiment with the 0% dough versus the 3% dough. The 6% dough is, spoiler alert, pretty salty. So don't bother, keep your salt and your ingredients for another dough. Then, once you're done your experiment, wherever you watched, come on back and leave a comment to tell me how it went. That's going to do it for episode 5. See you next week, and as always, thanks for coming to class.